Yo, this is the first recording of my uh, dual lane start uh, video. I haven't been in a while, but I'm going to give it a go. And I think I've had a lot of problems in my rankings recently where ADCs are kind of not following instructions and people don't really understand what's the best start with the characters we have and what's the best start versus the characters they have. Um, so there's a few things to take into account here whenever I'm deciding and whenever pro players decide, okay, what, start, what start should we do? There's always a lot. There's, always, there's a few factors. These four are the main four. However, they're not in order. So generally, as soon as you look at the opponents in dueling, you want to go, okay, how much fight have they got level one and how much fight have they got level two so level one let's think about certain characters character number one ulla has two abilities because of his, because of his stance change he also has a cc uh crowd controls especially slows early game are really really strong so thinking about how much cc they've got and how much damage they've got and also if their range is really important so ulla very strong character jingwei pretty strong compared this to for example let's say uh i'm trying to think of a hunter now it's really bad. Uh, I should really have one. I should really have one prep, shouldn't I? Um, I mean, okay, Apollo. There we go, Apollo. Right, Apollo has one ability, so already not great. Um, does damage, but nothing else. There's no slow. There's no stun. You know, he has decent autos, so you know that a long AA trade wouldn't be beneficial for you. However, until that point, which is ten autos. You, you're going to be winning the fight all up versus Apollo if everyone hits everything. And then the support's coming to play, so does the enemy support, is the enemy support a Mir who can fight early, or a Sobek who can pluck and force your beads, or that can you know, get you poked out, or is it, for example, an Athena? An Athena who might have a slow, might have a high, high clearing ability, but doesn't. But number one has only one ability. Number two doesn't really have a lot of damage. So that's what you're going to think about. Uh, slows typically are better than stuns early because they usually last a longer period. And then you've also got clear pressure. Okay, well, maybe we, maybe... Maybe we have the worst fight, but if we can one-shot the wave, for example, with his army, his army fight pressure is not that high because her autos hit quite quick, hit quite weak, right? But a clear pressure, well, she one-shots, she one-shots the wave, and if you fight into a wave, then you know you could die. The minions hurt early, um, and that could be a big problem. And then you've got level two pressure. Okay, well, when do they hit level two, and when do we hit level two? If they hit level two before us, is it a kill? For example, if it's a Sobek and he starts with his three, well, it's not that great of a fight, right? But then if it's level 2, well, instantaneously he's got a pluck. And if you're only level 1, that's a big problem. So you need to make sure you're doing the right start to avoid certain situations. And then you've got mana and health sustainability. Now, different supports and different hunters need different amount of pots. I would never recommend going mana pots on either class. But on some supports, you go multi-pot very rarely, very off meta picks. And on most some ADCs, for example, Hachiman, you only go four health pots. You don't even go any multi pots. That's because his passive gives him uh, pretty much infinite mana early game. So even though you belong, even though Hachiman and Apollo are very similar, they, they have an ability that they can throw out and it costs mana and it doesn't do any doesn't does decent damage but no CC. Hachiman is still a stronger fight level one because he can go more health pots and he has and the mana comes from his passive. Therefore, he has more sustainability overall and he will win the one v one. So it, it's all about comparing and thinking about what gods can fight and when they can fight and that's the most important thing so i'm only going over a few situations uh every since every situation let's imagine you're we're from the bottom going up as the minimap would be um and i'll go over each start who it's beneficial for which characters like to do it and why it's been why why it's good and we'll try and work that way this is going to be a bit sketch i've tried to do the best i can just going to try and try and picture it obviously the, the lane is there the tower circle the purple and the alpha is in Blight blue, only because alpha RP is usually white and I can't do that unless I make the entire screen black. And I didn't want to do that just because it might have looked weird. Okay, so the standard start right now in SPL and the standard start you see in ranked um, differs a little bit. But let's say let's say people do purple wave alpha. So you do the purple buff, you drop both, both the support and the ADC drop abilities. You tank it up, you go to the wave, you clear all six minions, then you go back to your own alpha harpy. You hug the alpha harpy, you're level two. That's it. Boom. Both teams are the same. Um, both teams clear the purple buff probably a very similar time. For example, some gods like Emir are really, really good at clearing because of their um, AA passive. Uh, some gods such as Sobek and Terra struggle a bit more. So if you're a support that is weaker at clearing, you're going to arrive at the wave later. If you arrive at the wave later, you're going to have to do... You're going you're gonna to be tanking damage from minions because as soon as their minions are dead, as soon as your minions are dead... They didn't mean it's going to be battering you first unless you want to get them into tower. So if it, think about that is if they have a really insane clear in, in, the even, in, the, in this even situation, the team with the better clear will always win here because they'll take less poke from the minions because they have more, because they have, uh, 
they have more minions alive than the enemy team do. And they've also cleared and they can go off to put to, uh, Alpha Harpy. And if they can clear the wave and go to Alpha Harpy, they'll be back in time for the for the second wave um, faster than you will. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a snowball. You won't really lose much from it, but you could lose a bit of health. And that's generally not a good idea. So... That is one. That is one of the two main starts. The second start is the purple alpha wave start. So people go purple, then they go alpha happy. They hog it, then they go to the wave. Um, this start is really good for those that have pretty bad wave, pretty bad wave clear. So what's going to happen here is, um, and we'll go over a situation later. The reason the reason this start is the best is because you're guaranteeing hitting two off the first wave. Um, if you uh, if the enemy team clears and clears into you, you'll get the full five. You'll get five minions and a spirit minion, maybe, maybe six. You never know. But it doesn't matter. You need all you need is five. As soon as you get those five minions and the health RP and the purple buff, you're in there. You're level two. You, you're kicking off. Um, the problem with this again is that this this does also benefit the team with the better clear. If uh, when the waves are meeting in the middle, then a no team is collecting the XP. The problem here is, is that if you clear purple and alpha harpy slower than the enemy, you might miss out on a few creeps. If you do reach the wave faster than the enemy, you should never clear in this situation because purple and alpha harpy are both down and therefore there's no more farm you can punish or steal from the enemy. The next develop, the next best farm is the wave. So by freezing, you're guaranteeing the enemy team's going to lose a few minions. If you start pushing the wave, it means that your wave will win harder and that your minions won't die. So you're guaranteeing they get the XP rather than rather than freezing them out of one or two minions. And one or two minions every wave, that means every three waves, making them lose a wave. So it's one third of their farm gone, especially as hunter players. It's really important to freeze when you can if you are playing try hard. Um, so those are the two standards. This, this is a... This is a when mirror matchups happen, if people do the same starts, this is very usual in ranked. People people don't really like uh, going out of the comfort zones. I would say generally, especially in GM and Masters ranked, this is the most common start. Um, purple, Auric, Purple, Alpha, Harpy into the wave. Pretty standard. Then we've got a few situations. So let's say you've decided, okay, um, the enemy team has a lot better clear than we do. So what's going to happen? We're going to... We're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to go purple and then we're going to go beat them to the wave. We don't we don't want to because they can the enemy team goes purple and alpha harpy. If they purple enemy team goes purple, alpha harpy and then the wave, and we do the same, they'll outclear us. So what we think is we think okay, well let's not let's not go cleared. Let's do the purple and let's run to the wave and clear it and then run away. And it doesn't matter if they clear the wave faster then, right? Because the wave's already gone. We we've already we've already secured our XP. But then here's the problem. There's two situations. There's only one situation that's going to go bad. Um, obviously, we talked about earlier. If people also want to do purple wave, then it means that you might, you might, you might take, you might lose one or two minions. You might lose a bit of health. That's fine for the purple for the people with the worst fight and the worst clear. You should be expecting to lose something. But the problem is, is when and this is a mistake that a lot of supports make in lower ranks. Is you're like, okay, well. Because we're going to the wave anyway, let's use our hog on purple buff and we'll get there even faster, right? And it kind of makes sense. There. You cl you're clearing purple, you get into the wave, and you're clearing it as fast as possible. Now, if the enemy supports smart, you've used your your secure on the on the purple. You haven't got secure anymore for the alpha harpy. If you lose the alpha harpy, you're not hitting level 2. So it doesn't matter how much of a wave you cleared. If the enemy team goes purple into alpha harpy and then they hog they hog their alpha harpy and they're cleared and the support sees you walk into the lane and your hogs down i would instantaneously run rather than into the lane i would run here and i would contest your alpha harpy and if i steal that not only is my ac getting a solar wave and he's and i hit level two off one minion but there's no more available farm for you to get purple's down the wave's gone and your alpha harpy's gone so you're guaranteeing that you're gonna have two level one players versus a level one and level two and this level one player will be hitting level two in one minion so you offer of this play here, if you use your hog on purple, you're guaranteeing to be down one level on the second wave. Now, second wave, now you can avoid deaths, don't get me wrong. You can sit back and you can let them clear. But in top level games, people will start freezing. And when people start freezing, you get forced into uncomfortable situations. If you're a god, if you're playing against two level twos in lane or a level two, uh, level two Amir, for example, and then you're a level one Athena and that Amir blinks on you and freezes you, there's a high chance you're going to die. So it's really important not to use your hog on purple, but really save it for the alpha harpy. If you are committing, if you are committing to ever, if you ever want, ever want to go to the alpha harpy, it's really important to save it for your own, just to make sure you guarantee level two in lane. So then we've got 
we've got the reverse situation. You clear purple. You're like, okay, well, our fight's better. But we, but they're, let's say their clear's better, but our fight's better. Well, we can go purple into Alpha Harpy. We can let them clear. Because we can't clear them. There's no point. If you guarantee, if you can't contest, if the if enemy team's got on his an army and then Amir, you can, you can never contest that clear if you're an Athena and an Apollo. So what you're going to do is you're just going to do purple into Alpha. Guaranteed you're hitting level 2 off the, off the first wave. And then you see they've used the hog. Now, there's a chance here that you can... Uh, you can steal. Let's say so they've used the hog, so the the biggest secure of the alpha harp is down, and you walk up to it and you try and steal it, and they get it anyway. They both hit level two. So if they have a str support with strong with strong secure anyway, for example, let's say a um, terror clap, which is 140 damage with the auto. Let's say it's an Amir two that is 100 and then. Does it do 80 damage and then the author does like 60? The chance of you stealing it from that kind of character is really, really rare. Compared to a Sobek, for example, where his three hits for like 60 early game, you know, there's a big there's a big difference in especially with what you play and what they play. So sometimes, even though it looks like you want to contest it and run at them, the best thing to do is just to clear the next wave and, and stay away. Because if they hit level two and you just you're level one, then it's level two, two level twos versus level one support who's also in your jungle he's going to get run down at some point uh, it depends on how much pressure they've got obviously so there's the main starts that's pretty much explaining it i hope i hope it explains it um i would generally say go if you if you're scared of the enemy team's clear going purple and alpha is the way to go if you think you've got the better clear and you don't you don't want to fight them at level two let's say let's say you're playing against an rto ulla Okay, RTO will have an amazing fight, but they have really bad wave clear. So what we can do is we can go purple, we can go into the wave, clear it, and we can go out to our Alpha Happy, and they have to use all their fight abilities that are bad at clearing to clear the wave. So now RTO and Ola, who have four abilities at level two between them, have used all their mana, all their abilities in the wave, they can't fight you anymore. And then you can go back and you can get advantage in clearing the, the next wave, and then it snowballs and snowballs. And if you shove a team that has a good fight on the tower, and they have to use their abilities to clear, then they become a bad fight god because they haven't got anything to fight with. So think about that. I would always say purple alpha is the best thing. Now, there is one unusual start, which is when people fight you. So let's say, let's call it a fight lane. So you can do two situations. Let's say, let's say you're the one being attacked now. So the enemy team, the enemy team runs at you straight away down here. And just as you're about, and just as just as the timer reaches zero thirty, just as you pull this buff and you drop your abilities, the people walk in. Okay, you've just used two abilities on the camp, and they've walked in, and you're going to be half HP off the camp. There's a chance you can die. Um, you might have to use your hog to secure purple, which is what I would do because they've because they've committed losing their own farm to try and stop yours. It's fine losing the per the help the purple buff because then you can clear and you'll be ahead for the next wave. However, you can die in this situation. So, the best thing to do is to place wards early to avoid this avoid this start. You want to know what the enemy is doing if possible. So, in the jungle, I can kind of replicate the walls, I guess. This would make a little bit of sense. You kind of have a few safety walls um, like this on either side. And, um, yeah, yeah, like that. That, that, that. I think we, I think we kind of know what I mean. So... There's two, there's two places they can come from. The people can come from behind the gold free pit or through the gold free pit. You can weave around back here, but nobody ever does that in ranks. So I wouldn't really, wor I wouldn't really worry about that. There's two, there's two wards that matter. You can try, you can run out of base straight away, and you can place a ward here, right where that circle is. I would recommend if you can, if you're a fast character like Jing Wei, if you place a ward here, you can see very, very early, preemptively, how if they're on the buff or not. Most people are hanging around their purple buff sitting there around 25 seconds, so you know very clearly, all right, we can connect, we can do our start, it's all good. The problem happens is when you don't place your ward, so, you, so I would recommend placing a ward just in between the alpha harpy and the, and the wall. Yeah, my mouse is double-clicking. And then you also want to place one here. I, when I, as a support player, I always place one there as well. When a, those two spots cover both entrances where they can come from. Then they could come down. They could come down the lane here, right? But you can you can stand there and spot it out. So basically, all I'm saying is make sure you place your wards early to avoid this fight thing. Now there are some situations where, unfortunately, the enemy team has just good enough pressure early that you cannot fight them. Now let's give an example. Let's say let's say you've got a mere and a mere and Ola versus Athena or Apollo. So as we talked about before, going back all the way to the left, 
talking about fight pressure, clear pressure, level 2 pressure, and mana and health pressure. So, let's talk about fight pressure. Well, it may has a 3 second slow and a low cooldown. And all it has two abilities and a stun. Athena and Apollo have no CC, a long abilities. Right, see, they lost the fight pressure. Now, clear pressure. Well, Amir is also really good clear, so they win the clear pressure. Level 2 pressure. When you think about gods, what do they most likely upgrade? Well, an Apollo will most likely upgrade his 3 second, which means he has a dash, and Athena might level a dash as well, but they're not aggressive tools, right? Compared to Anola, for example, is when he hits level 2, he has 4 abilities, and when... A, and when a mid hits level two, he has a he has a one point five one point two five second freeze and a three second slow. So the amount of CC and damage they've got between them is far higher than anything in an Apollo. So you're instantly losing that. Also, mana and health ability probably pretty similar. A mid doesn't use a two is quite uh, not that much mana, but it's a lot low cooldown. So over time you'll be using a lot. But it's kind of irrelevant in this situation. There's no gods that have a, have more mana or health than usual. Um, like a Hachiman, so that's kind of important. So all you know is you're losing all of these three here, all not in your favor. So what's the best thing to do? So let's say let's let me just delete these wards. You know, you, let's just say you know you have to ward early now. You know you have to ward. Try and ward on their their alpha harpy. You sneak down here, get a get a ward planted there. That is not that is very that is not meant to be that low. <laughs> um, but let's say uh, let, me, let me delete all this real quick, boys, and you can understand what I mean. I, I need to explain how to stand in the jungle. Or try to when to decide if you want to fight or not. You need to think about it. Um, you couldn't really make this beforehand. I think it's like on the fly. You kind of think about the topic. Um, so um, different color boys. That's a problem. That's a big problem. Yeah, that'll do right. So. Um, Right, your two, your two characters, and you see, and you see on your ward, you see two people running towards you. Right, what do you think is the best thing you can do? So you can't fight them, you can't outclear them, but there's one thing you, there's one thing you do have, and that's that you have, you have the, you have the knowledge where they are, and you can hit them before they can hit you, and then you also have hog. Now the thing with hog is this is why a hog's always bought is to avoid this start. Hog is a 200 damage secure. No ability in the game does 200 damage instantly at level 1. So you can guarantee to secure your buff. So for example, let's say let's say the game, let's say let's say the time is is reaching this. Let's say let's say at 31, you get a ping on your map that you see two enemies sprinting down here. And you're an Apollo and an Athena and you're like, "Well, we can't fight them." What you can do is you can actually drop your Athena 3 and your Apollo 1 and commit autos and then hog the buff when it reaches 200 HP. And you can clear it because of the hog before they even get there. And then even if they end up going to the wave and you're contesting it, there's no they're not going to hit level 2 because they've only cleared... All they've got is one wave of XP worth, whereas you've got a full purple and a wave. So you'll, in fact, be ahead from this. So it's all about judging how early the enemy team is going to be there and how aggressive they can be. Now, it's a lot more difficult, for example, if um, you don't know they're coming. You have to make sh it's kind of, you have to be wary about it, but it, it becomes more difficult is when they actually are there in time. So I would say a good time to, in a good time to arrive for an invade is usually 20 seconds, usually 10 seconds before. So oh, that's meant to be, that meant to be black. Let's say they arrive there 10 seconds before. And you have to make a choice. Now, you can't fight them, so you need to go and fight around the safest part of the map. So the safest part of the map for you to be in now is going to be the wave. Now the reason why the wave is really safe for you to fight around is because that if you're the one just clearing and you're not aggressing, you're taking no extra damage. But if they try and fight into you and abuse their pressure and uh, with the fight with the fighting, they're going to be taking damage from creeps. Uh, so it's going to be a, it's going to be they, they're losing the trade because they're against the wave and against two gods as well. Now you might not you, you still might not win the fight. That is that is absolutely going to happen sometimes. So you need to you then if you lose if you lose this wave pressure as well, even if they're trying to fight you, your support has to go and pressure. If they meet, so let's say your ADC is still clearing a wave, your support dips underneath the map and stands here. They're only level one, and your support full HP support with hog. They can't do the buff. You just stand around, you blink in, you walk in, make sure they don't leash it, make sure you pull it before you hog it. Hog it, there you go. You've, you've secured the purple, your job's done. So all you have to do is just try and judge when can we do this and burst this in time with my hog that we can get away with it scot-free. Because you don't want to start pulling a buff and taking damage from it 
and then getting caught afterwards in a fight without hogging it. Because then you've taken damage from the, from the purple buff and you're already going to lose the fight anyway. So it's all about judgment and it's all about playing how you want to play. There's different characters that for sh there's different characters that are better at fighting and worse at fighting. Um, I mean, I can probably I can probably get a list of gods that are high pressure. You know, actually, let me get let me let me let me get a let me get a picture of let me show let me get my game up and show a few gods that are high pressure. So, when you're thinking about high pressure characters. The high pressure character I mean, Yemoja. These are the characters that are not only good at clearing, but are good at fighting. So a Yemoja, like I said, mana sustainability, infinite mana early game. She might have a cooldown on it, but she has no mana. She can spam to spam and spam and spam and spam. Nothing you can do about it. She will get pressure. Emir, very high pressure. Okay, that's it for the supports. Usually all the rest of these gods, not really that much pressure. Kuzumbo doesn't have a great fight level 1, but he has really good fight in the wave because of his 3, because you can push times 80 damage. Um, you've also got warrior supports, such as Hercules, such as Erlang. Um, these characters are more unusual, but you do see them. They have a really good level 1 fight. Uh, warriors typically hit harder than Guardians. Their autos will hit for over 45, whereas Guardians' autos will only hit for 30. So you're losing the trade over time. Um, so against specific cards, I would say generally Emir... Yemoja, um, Herc are the main three where you have to be a bit careful about how you're going to play the lane, play the fight level one. Everyone else really invading. I mean, for an example, if a if a Terra level one runs at your purple buff, as long as your ADC can fight, they can have a pressure. Hi, Dad, I'm doing a video. Right. Um, as long as they can pressure your, as long as they can, uh, as long as you don't get caught off guard. There's no way the Terra can ever out-secure you, and there's no way she can ever fight you. Terra's abilities are extremely long as well, for example, 15, 15, 18. So, the chat, the, she, none of these abilities will ever be good, compared to the Ymir, who has the 8-second 2, Yemoji, who has like, the 3-second 1, and then Herc, who has the extremely powerful pa powerful passive, which is 5 plus 2, 5 plus 1 per level. So, it's, it's really, really... Um, difficult to think about and you have to keep thinking about it but there's specific gods you should look out for this is similar with some adcs generally i would say supports make the lane pressure but there are a few hunters that can do it on their own um Ulla is very good pressure on her is very good pressure on her has the 20 flat pen early or prop reduction sorry and then Ulla has the double ability those are the two main ones in fighting you have to be careful about rama as well now, rama is a really tough one so if i go back to my paint doc for you real quick this is all about fighting and just having the right thing to do now, Ramas are extremely, extremely good in the wave because they can hit you in the wave and they can hit all six minions at once for a 65 and auto. So they're guaranteeing going to clear the wave first. So let's say you're against, let's say you're against a Rama, a Rama Hercules, and they don't invade you, which is a mistake on their part. But what do you think is best? Do you think it's best to sit back and? Uh, let them clear, or do you think it's better to get to the way first and clear it? Because so, so the way to think about it is Rama doesn't have an ability, so his fights his fights good because of the slow, but it's not that it's not that great, you know. Like it's good, but it's not the the best. Um, you there's, there's some situations where if you know that they have a really good um, clear, you might want to meet them at the way first, try and go purple to wave to try and out-clear them if they do the wrong start. If people do purple to alpha naturally, and you do purple to wave, you're going to end up beating them, because Rama will have to waste all his arrows and all his, all his mana on the wave, and you've already, you know, you've hit level 2 already, you don't have to fight them on their best part. So you want to avoid fighting on on your weak part, and you want to, you want to fight on your best part. So you can't fight a Rama level 1 on, on the wave. So you clear the wave, and then you run away, and then level 2... Well, Rama's level one is very good, but level two Rama gets a dash that's not really that's not it's not aggressive. It's not like an on her jump where you can jump in. It's quite it's quite bad. So it's all about judging it, and there's certain characters that are very very good. Um, again, there's, you need to think about those characters. It's all about what you play. If you play in if you're playing characters like Ganesh, you need to be very careful. Ganesh, Kepri, um, Athena, Geb. Uh, you know, Terra, these characters are really not that great. They do have, they have, we have one ability, it's a high cooldown, does maybe, maybe does decent damage, but it has no CC, and that's a big problem, um, compared to the Emir, who, who obviously has the, uh, the two second, 90 damage, 35% slow for four seconds, um, that we're talking about. 
So I hope that gives a little bit of introduction to starts and what you need to think about is, I would always think about it is, those four things right there is, have they got have they got an amazing fight? If it's slightly better than yours, it doesn't matter. If it's insanely better, that's when it becomes a problem. Have they got semi-good clear? Is it way better? Don't worry about it. It's all about it's all about is it way better or is it similar? If it's quite similar, just do any start. Just just make sure the best start to do if you've got quite equal is purple or alpha harpy into wave. If you don't if you don't want to be aggressive, but if you are the one that wants to be aggressive and start understanding how to uh, clear and play aggressively as a support player anyway, um, you need to think about what people don't want to play against. So this is this is talking quite defensively, right? Like saying like, oh, you need to be careful about the fight and such. You need to make sure you you don't get invaded and ward. But if you're the Emir and you're the Herc player, well, well, here's the problem. If you're not going to abuse how good you are early game and they scale better to, to late game, then what's the point of picking an early game character if you're not going to abuse it? So you have to try and make people uncomfortable. So that's where that's where the fight comes in, right? If you're against a really low pressure, if I'm against an Apollo Ganesh and I'm a Hercules Ola, it's going to be a bit awkward, but you're going to have to fight them. You can't allow a Ganesh Apollo to get away with that against two pressure gods like a Herc, Herc Ulla. So that would be where you walk in and you start contesting. And then at that point, you need to make sure that they, if they want to pull the buff, you get on it early. You don't you don't ever let it go below 400. If it gets below 400, it's one ability away from a hog. And then as soon as that's hogged, you're falling behind in lane because you're not going to be level two when they are, and then we level two first, and then all your pressure, gone. Gone completely. So... Just think about that. Try and think about how comfortable you're going to be in certain situations and just think about, look out for certain characters and start thinking, okay, this character's not too good, so we will be okay doing this start. And eventually you'll figure it out. Don't don't always just do the same start, especially if you're playing an aggressive character like Hercules. Um, So yeah, I think that was quite a long video, actually. Didn't mean to talk for 27 minutes, but that'll do. So I think that should explain, um, that should explain everything, I think. Um... These were a bit interesting to make. I was considering doing them upside down. But those are the graphs that I've got. Uh, not amazing, but, you know, they'll do. So I hope that explains it. Um, if you've got any questions below about certain matchups, certain gods, um, maybe you've got a start yourself that you think's good, and I'll try and explain why it's bad or why it might be good. You know, there are a few starts out there that people don't do uh, that might be okay. So, you know, it's all about the, it's all about trying stuff out and experimenting, really. Um as long as you don't die, that's the main thing, really. Uh, that's, that's what I'd say to everyone. If you don't die, you're not really ever going to fall behind that much. Um, usually, second purple is more dangerous than first purple, purely because uh, there's no there's, the, the chance of a jungler being there is very, very low. Um, but I can do that in another video if this gets a lot of uh, feedback that I'm that I'm enjoying, you know. So, so cool. So, I hope that explains things. Again, drop questions if you need them, boys. If not, then I'm gonna try upload some more theory. The god guides are a bit of a problem. They take really, they take ages to edit, and I feel like I could do them still, but I feel like this is, I feel like my content could be better towards this. But yeah. Anyway, that explains it maybe. So I hope so. Anyway. So, uh, yeah. Bye.